afternoon, everyone. And the first item of business this afternoon is consideration of business motion 10468 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a timetable for the Stage 3 consideration of the Housing Scotland Bill. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press the request to speak button now. Uh, Minister, would you like Moved. to move? Thank you very much. And as no member has asked to speak against the motion, therefore I'll now put the question to the Chamber. And the question is that motion number 10468, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, are we all agreed to? We are. Thank you. So we'll now move to the next item of business, which is portfolio questions on education and lifelong learning. And question one from Mr Chick Brodie. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to encourage college and university engagement with employers following the publication of the Wood Report on the Commission for Developing Scotland's Young Workforce. Well, thank you. Um, Ms. Uh, Cabinet Secretary Mike Russell. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I would just point out I'm in the process of losing my voice, so I'm sure people will be gentle with me this afternoon, surprising Good as that might be. Uh, the Commission, Presiding Officer, has made a number of recommendations to facilitate increased levels of interaction between education and industry. The Government agrees that such partnerships are an essential element of a more effective vocational education system and will consider the implementation of the recommendations carefully with Scotland's education community, including universities and colleges, with employers and, of course, with our partners in local government. Thank you. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his answer. The Skills Plus Survey 2014 of this month indicated that 85% of employers recognise they have a role to play in providing young people with work experience opportunities, yet only 8% surveyed feel they are doing enough to do so. The survey also revealed 55% of employers believe advanced apprenticeships would increase their participation and develop their, work their workforce. Will the Cabinet Secretary initiate an immediate pilot on improved employer engagement with colleges and universities as suggested by the survey? And may I humbly suggest that that pilot be at Ayrshire College? Cabinet Secretary. I always recognise a piece of special pleading when I hear one, and of course I'm sympathetic to Ayrshire College, knowing Ayrshire very well. Uh, my colleague Angela Constance uh, announced yesterday that the Government will provide a million pounds to support the establishment of regional industry-led Invest in Young People groups. And these will, as the name suggests, be led by industry, will focus on establishing close links between employers and education. And we will be seeking to involve the principal education interests in each region. And colleges are a very important partner in, in that, particularly on their stronger regional footing. I know that Ayrshire colleagues make, the College makes employer engagement with employers a, a key element of its approach. It's a very strong employer-led board, and this was highlighted in the Commission's report. The College is always a willing and effective partner across a range of development activity, and as this work is taken forward, then the Government will seek to engage directly with the College on its potential contribution in that part of Scotland. So I, I give the member a qualified yes. Thank you very much. Uh, question two, James Kelly. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what recent discussions it has had with the Scottish Funding Council regarding European regional development funding that was given to Woodburn House, the Woodburn House site of, of the former Langside College. Secretary. I, I do acknowledge that the member has pursued this matter um, over a long period of time. I have to tell him that we, the government is not in discussion with the Scottish Funding Council regarding the ERDF fund contribution to Woodburn House, but we are discussing what is a complex historic case with the European Commission before engaging with the Scottish Funding Council. James Kelly. Uh, thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Uh, as the Cabinet Secretary is aware, I first raised this uh, in November last year. The Cabinet Secretary agreed to investigate in January, and since that time, Woodburn House uh, has actually been demolished. Uh, can I ask why is it taking so long to receive an answer? When, I will, when will I receive an answer to this query? And also, does this issue of European regional development funding to educational establishments affect any other sites in Scotland? I'm happy to write to the member in the detail of the case, but can I just say that this was a, and remains a complex issue. It relates to the funding of Woodburn House um, to provide additional training facilities for the Western Scotland European Relig Regional Development Fund programme from 1997 to 1999, before this parliament was in existence. 
Now, there has been, and I recognise the local member knows this and is representing the view, there has been community reaction to the decision of the College to sell the land and the building for development. But it is necessary for us, under the Commission guidance in relation to Article 24 of the Council Regulation No. 208293, to look at the conditions for the reduction or suspension of assistance in operations where irregularities or, sufficient, uh, or significant changes affecting the nature or conditions of the implementation of the operation have been detected during the programme. Now, this is one of those issues. Uh, the question relates to whether any repayment would be due, and until we have that uh, item settled, that it's not possible to give the member a conclusive answer. But I, I do make a commitment to him because he has a strong interest in this and has taken it forward. We will make sure that he is kept informed, and if there is significant information, we'll provide it to him. Many thanks. Question three, Aileen MacLeod. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. To ask the Scottish Government what strategic contribution education can make to improving regional economic activity. Secretary. Uh, education has a key role to play in improving regional economic activity, ensuring that all our young people can both contribute to and benefit from a strong economy. Our ambitions for economic growth will not be realised without higher level of employment for, among young people. And the Commission for Developing Scotland's Young Workforce recognised this. Curriculum for Excellence, College Reform and the Modern Apprenticeship Programme all provide a strong foundation for ensuring that young people are equipped with the skills for learning, life and work. The Cabinet Secretary for Training, Youth and Women's Employment welcomed the Wood Commission's landmark report and yesterday made a statement in which he committed to working in partnership to take forward its ambitious agenda. Aileen MacLeod. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that uh, comprehensive response? And the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that Dumfries and Galloway has an unusually low level of qualifications within the workforce. So in light of this, what strategic, what strategic consideration is being given by the Government to improve the situation working together in partnership with others at the local and national level and in light of the Wood Commission report. I do recognise that, Fat, as a, a former representative of the South of Scotland, I do know that Dumfries and Galloway has an unusually low level of qualifications within the workforce. That is why, for example, there has been such significant investment in the Crichton site to make sure that there is a, an institution or a number of institutions of, of strength and significance in one place, building a real momentum. And the Scottish Funding Council and the local authority education departments are working with colleges and schools in six early adopter regions for wood, including Dumfries and Galloway, to increase the range and scale of vocational pathway opportunities for young people. We need to make sure there's a good partnership working, bringing in Skills Development Scotland, making sure there are more vocational options for young people, making sure there's a focus on STEM subjects. And we do need the strong, committed, principled, willing buy-in of the local authority to make that happen as well. Thanks. Question four, Alex Rowley. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to address the estimated backlog of over £72 million pounds for the necessary school repairs costs in Fife. Alex well, Rowley. As the Member will be aware, the maintenance of school <coughs> buildings is the statutory responsibility of local authorities in Scotland as defined by Section 17 of the Education Scotland Act 1980. It is the responsibility of individual local authorities to manage their own budgets and to allocate the total financial resources available to them on the basis of local needs and priorities, having first fulfilled their statutory obligations and the jointly agreed set of national and local priorities. The vast majority of this funding, including any money for schools, maintenance is provided by means of a block grant. However, Fife Council were also awarded £19.4 million to replace Ochmuti High School, uh, which opened in August 2013, and will be awarded a further £23 million uh, to replace the existing Buckhaven and Kirkland High Schools over the next few years. Thank you. Alex Riley. Um, I thank the Minister for, for his answer. He will be aware that I did ask the Scottish Government previously in a table question um, what the update was on the maintenance needs of the school estate right across Scotland. And I got a response saying that, that the Scottish Government does not hold this level of information. I have since contacted um, local authorities across Scotland, and today I've had responses from seven local authorities and tallying up what they have said is the maintenance needs of those seven authorities. That adds that comes up to one, some £481 million. Does the Minister not accept 
that our school estate right across Scotland is in dire need of investment and that there are many schools out there that need investment and need it now and will they not accept some kind of responsibility and get into dialogue with the local authorities to look at what the maintenance needs are of our school estate right across Scotland? Thank you. Alistair Allen. Well, as the, the former council leader in the area concerned, he will be more than aware that it is the statutory responsibility of yeah, yeah. Fife Council to maintain its schools and has never been the responsibility legally of this or any previous government under Absolutely. the 1980 Act to maintain Absolutely schools. True. What this government has done, oh, however, as I've just oh, indicated, dear. what this government has done, however, as I've just indicated, is fulfilled uh, our ambitions when it comes to building, rebuilding, and refurbishing schools. And I've mentioned two in five, which I've had uh, the pleasure of visiting. But the, the, the member cannot escape the responsibility of the council of which he was leader for the statutory responsibility for maintaining buildings. Annabelle Ewing. Hey, thank you, President. Officer, can the Minister confirm how much the Scottish Government has in fact invested in Scotland schools for the future programme? And that notwithstanding, of course, the swinging uh, Westminster cuts that have been made to Scotland's budget. Minister. Well, as I indicated, the responsibility that the government has is when it comes to rebuilding uh, schools, and uh, uh, that is a responsibility uh, or a priority that we have fulfilled. Uh, and the government is investing £800 million uh, into the £1.25 billion Scotland Schools for the Future programme, uh, with the remainder coming from local authorities. 67 new schools will be built, uh, the length and breadth of the country, for around 46,000 pupils, with at least one new school project in every local authority area, two in Fife, uh, and all will be open to pupils by March 2018. Thank you very much. A question five, Patrick Harvey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government when it will produce the final version of its guidance on relationships, sexual health and parenthood education, and whether the right to be properly informed with the knowledge to make safe, healthy and positive choices will be an integral part of the document. Cabinet Secretary. Presenting officer, we've received a wide range of responses to the engagement on the draft and will publish finalised guidance later this year. Uh, we fully recognise the importance of this guidance and we want to ensure we strike the right balance. The majority of comments made in feedback were in relation to teachers, children and young people on issues of conscience and the parental right of withdrawal from specific lessons on sexual health education. These are issues in which strong opinions are held. It's important that time is taken to develop guidance that addresses these issues in a sensitive way. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. I think the evidence is pretty, pretty much globally accepted now that good quality education about sex, sexuality, sexual health and emotional well-being is crucial to encouraging positive, healthy choices amongst young people, as well as protecting young people from coercion, sexual abuse and exploitation. Does the government accept the scale of the, the body of that global evidence? Will they commit to ensuring that that principle is followed through uh, in relation to all young people in all schools, denominational and non-denominational? And will they agree to meet with organisations with a specific interest, like Barnard of Scotland and LGBT Youth Scotland before finalising the document. The Children and Young People Act, of course, does make a commitment, a legislative commitment to well-being. And I would say that far from establishing good quality and high quality education in these matters, that is already established in Scotland and is underway. What we now need to do is to make sure that as the guidance changes in the light of legislative and societal changes, we do so in a consultative way that takes people with us, not in a confrontational way that loses people. I have always been willing to meet uh, groups right across the spectrum, and I maintain that willingness. Patrick Harvey knows that I've met with these groups before, and I will do so again. But what we need to do is to make sure that we have, as much as is possible, an agreed way forward not a conf confrontational way forward. Many thanks. Question six, John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what assistance it provides to local authorities for the education of gypsy travellers. Minister Alistair Allen. The Scottish Government provides core funding to the Scottish Traveller Education Programme, uh, STEP, whose roles include uh, advice and support for both families and professionals. Within STEP's remit was the production of guidance for local authorities, schools and support services entitled Inclusive Education Approaches for Scotland's Travelling Communities within the Context of Interrupted Learning. The guidance was published in March 2011 and disseminated through the Traveller Education Network in which 22 Scottish local authorities are members 
and uh, the resource is now available online through Education Scotland. HMIE also produced a publication in 2005 which builds on self-evaluation guidance given in How Good Is Our School, entitled uh, Taking a Closer Look at Inclusion and Equality, Meeting the Needs of Gypsies and Travellers. This guide can be used by schools to evaluate the quality of their approaches to inclusion and equality relating to gypsy travellers and also to provide examples of best practice. Thanks. John Finney. Uh, I'm very grateful to the Minister for that detailed response. The Minister is aware of the level of disengagement there is with the educational process um, among the gypsy traveller community, and that's particularly the case in secondary education and particularly the, the case with young men. Will the Minister look at ways of having contact with the gypsy traveller community to explore ways that would uh, ensure that their lifestyle um, is supported by education rather than the education system excluding them? Minister. Well, the, the member is right to point to the very specific needs of, of the travelling community and of course the, uh, the Scottish education system and curriculum for excellence is founded on the idea that all children regardless of their, their ethnic group or their background have a right to an education that meets their needs of a, of a system that is flexible enough to cope with their needs rather than demanding uh, that they conform uh, to the system. Uh, I think uh, that issues uh, that um, institutions rather such as the uh, the Traveller Education Network have done a great deal uh, to promote that further understanding uh, and to ensure that we all listen to the, the very specific concerns that that uh, community quite rightly make clear. Many thanks. Question 7, Jamie Hepburn. Do you ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to protect from closure of those schools classified as rural? Minister. The Government is committed to protecting rural schools and that is why we have strengthened the Schools Consultation Scotland Act 2010 to establish more rigorous and specific requirements before a local authority may propose uh, closing. Uh, we will also improve the arrangements for all school closure proposals, requiring that these reach high standards of transparency and accuracy and protect schools from recurring closure consultations. Uh, these changes will be brought into force on the 1st of August 2014. Jamie Hepburn. Thank you, Minister, for the answer. In my constituency, there are three uh, such rural schools, Banton Primary School, Holy Cross Primary in Croy, and Chapel Green Primary in Queenieburn. Uh, and a survey I conducted in the villages, uh, these three villages showed 92 per cent support uh, for the policy of a presumption against a closure of rural schools. Does the Minister share my disappointment then that Labour-run North Lanarkshire Council refused to back uh, this policy, going so far as to vote against a motion to support the policy laid by the SNP councillors in uh, North Lanarkshire Council? Minister. Well, while I can't comment uh, on the individual schools, as the member will appreciate, uh, I do share his disappointment uh, that uh, not everyone has uh, shared uh, this government's commitment to ensuring that the legislation is strengthened. Uh, North Lanarkshire must certainly explain the, their own position on that. But I believe, and the government believes, that no uh, rural school uh, should be uh, without the protection of this Act. We certainly don't believe that no rural school should ever close. Sometimes that is necessary. Uh, but it is important that education authorities demonstrate careful consideration before proposing a rural school closure uh, at each stage. Uh, and that, that leads to a decision uh, that is based uh, on an understanding of the needs of the community. Thank you. Question 8, Claire Baker. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government when it last met the Scottish Funding Council and what issues were discussed. Cabinet Secretary. Scottish Government officials presenting office to meet regularly with the Scottish Funding Council to discuss matters relating to universities and colleges. The last strategic liaison meeting between the Scottish Government and the SFC officials was on 27th May. In addition to this, I meet quarterly with both the Chair and Chief Executive of the Scottish Funding Council to discuss strategic priorities and progress. The most recent meeting took place on the 5th of March, with the next scheduled for 7th August. Many thanks. Claire Baker. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary may be aware of Five College's decision to replace the adult programme courses with a two-year community skills course. Concerns have been raised with me that for more than 100 students who have additional support needs who are currently benefiting from non-certificated courses, this new course won't meet, meet their needs and they will be excluded from college opportunities and the social and educational benefit this is bringing them. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what direction he gives to the Scottish Founding Council regarding educational opportunities for adults with additional support needs within the college sector? And does he recognise that the reduction in non-certificated courses is having an adverse impact on people who have additional support needs? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, there are two parts to that question. I, I certainly do believe that the college sector should uh, be encouraged to uh, work right across the community 
to provide opportunity for all who come to them, and in those circumstances, then those with additional needs require to be accommodated in colleges and supported by them. I don't agree with the second part of the question. I do believe that certificated courses are vital and important for all uh, those who come to colleges, and the ways in which we can provide those opportunities, even those from the mo most distant from formal learning, is important. If the member has raised this issue with Fife College, I think that would be the right thing to do uh, in terms of talking to the principal and the chair of the board, both of whom are very open and approachable on all matters. Uh, and of course, she may also raise it formally with me, and I will raise it with the college if she gives me the details of the case. But I do know that Fife College, like all our colleges, is endeavouring to make sure that all young and older people within their area get given every opportunity, and I'm sure they are operating in that way. Many thanks. Question nine, Graham Day. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it encourages the establishment of student associations and how many have been set up since the post-16 Education Scotland Act 2013 came into force. Cabinet Secretary. Student associations are vital to ensuring that colleges and universities deliver the best possible experience for students. The Post-16 Education Scotland Act recognises the need for universities and colleges to have a students' association, which represents the interests of their student population. We continually seek opportunities to work with the Scottish Funding Council and NUS Scotland and other key stakeholders to ensure that a strong body of students' associations exists right across Scotland. Thanks, Graham Day. Uh, thank the Cabinet Secretary for the answer. But can I ask what work is being done to ensure that every college has an efficient, democratic, and active student association that's appropriately represented at board level, as opposed to the situation, in some instances pre reform, where the student voice was one hand picked by management? It is a very good question, uh, and a variety of actions are being undertaken. For example, two weeks ago I met Kelly Parry, the outgoing student president in Edinburgh College, to talk about a range of issues, including the issue of wider representation across Scotland, to make sure that every college had a students' association that was operating effectively. On Friday at the Young Voters event, I met uh, two student presidents, and I made a commitment to them, I offered indeed, mm to meet all the student presidents at an appropriate time and to talk to them about the work they're doing and the issues of concern to them, which included welfare cuts coming from Westminster. Um, I also am very pleased that the Post-16 Education Scotland Act uh, made sure that it increased the number of student members on a college board from one to two. This increase has already happened in the 10 single college regions, and the increase will occur in other regions when the new regional arrangements are put in place, which is the 1st of August for Glasgow and the Highlands and Islands, and the 1st of October for Lanarkshire. Thank you. Question 10, Nigel Don. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what importance it attaches to musical instrument, uh, instrument tuition in schools. Mr. Dr. Allen. Uh, we attach great importance to instrumental music tuition in schools. In late 2012, we announced the setting up of an instrumental music group uh, under the chairmanship of David Green. The group reported in June 2013 and made 17 recommendations, which were all accepted in full or in part by the government. In November 2013, we established the Instrumental Music Implementation Group, again under David Green, and this has been working hard to take forward the recommendations, including developing more support for local authorities. Nigel Don. I thank the Minister for that response, and he will recognise, as I do, that musical skills uh, are not the only thing that are required by instrumental skills, but actually some very real social uh, benefits as well. Uh, it seems to me that local authorities continue to find this to be an easy budget to prune, and I recognise their financial circumstances. Does the Minister share my concern that we might be going back to a position where instrumental skills actually are those of the pres preserve of the rich? Minister? Well, I certainly think it would be very disappointing were, were any local authority to take that attitude because there has, in fact, been a, a good degree of, of consensus uh, uh, between local authorities and the government uh, through David Green's activities uh, to ensure that we don't uh, uh, create a situation or don't allow to maintain a situation in Scotland where uh, musical instrumental tuition uh, is uh, the preserve of any one social group. Uh, I think it's also important that for the first time uh, David Green has put together a national vision uh, for uh, uh, musical instrumental tuition uh, to ensure that we give uh, it the place that it deserves in our education system. And it's also worth saying that over the last 11 years, the Scottish Government uh, has put £97 million into the Youth Music Initiative, uh, which is designed to ensure that uh, instrumental uh, music uh, uh, is available to the widest uh, possible group of young people. Thanks, Mary Scanlon. 
Uh, thank you. Can I just ask the Minister in terms of this new vision, which I welcome, and indeed the recommendations from David Green, uh, if it includes uh, access to lessons in bagpipe tuition, given that some schools across, some local authorities across Scotland offer bagpipes in every secondary school and other local authorities, it can be less than a quarter. Minister. Well, the member will be pleased to know that I share her enthusiasm uh, for bagpipes. Uh, the, the report doesn't uh, uh, specify individual musical instruments, but what it does do uh, is it does uh, um, encourage local authorities to take uh, cognizance of, of local um, musical traditions uh, and to ensure that those are respected uh, and promoted. Thank you very much. Alex Rowley. Thank you. Could I ask the Minister if he would be willing to come to my constituency and look at our a project that the local area committee set up around um, bagpipes and the primary schools, because I think it's important if we are going to see bagpipes um, played and pipe bands continue to, to be a part of Scotland's heritage and, and the community, that we actually go to the primary schools and do it for there. I'd very much welcome if you came and looked at the project. Dr Allen. I am more than happy to take up that invitation. Uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to praise the school's uh, bagpiping association and the other organisations which work uh, with uh, schools and young people in this area. Excellent. Question 11, Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it monitors the application in schools of getting it right for every child for children who require additional support. Minister Aileen Campbell. Education Scotland monitors the application of Getting It Right for Every Child through its inspection programme. The current inspection framework, How Good Is Our School 3, includes a focus on the wellbeing indicators in QI 2.1 learners' experiences, as well as consideration of implementation of GERFIC approaches through QI 5.3, meeting learning needs. Education Scotland is also supporting schools to develop a shared understanding of GERFEC and to introduce the self-evaluation tool developed in partnership with the Scottish Government. The implementation of the Additional Support for Learning Act is monitored through routine inspection of schools. Further, <coughs> Scottish ministers each year report to the Scottish Parliament on implementation of the Act. The report to the Parliament reports annual statistics and practice information relating to additional support for learning. Thank you. Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer, and I thank the Minister for the answer. Um, I have received concerns from parents of children with additional needs who feel that Aberdeen City Council, which has no autism strategy, is not getting it right for their children. Do the inspection bodies look at what is happening with the education of children with additional support needs when they carry out inspections? Are there any specific audits undertaken to analyse whether authorities are applying the GERFIC principles to kids who have additional needs? Minister. Um, through inspection, uh, Education Scotland places a priority to how well schools and services meet the needs of children with additional support needs, including consideration of how GERFIC approaches are implemented. And HM inspectors take account of this provision through their evaluation of quality indicators and all quality indicators have specific themes linked to additional support needs and those at risk of missing out. In every inspection, we are informed about the number of young people with additional support needs and the nature of their needs. Education Scotland also inspects special schools and units where all children and young people have additional support needs, including those with complex needs. Mm. Education Scotland also has resources available as part of our learning trails, and these are professional development packs that are used to meet the needs of specific groups of children, including those with autism. Of course, I'm happy to, to meet and liaise with the member if he requires it to help with his constituents because the E in GERFIC is, stands for every, and it's important that we ensure every child in Scotland gets the support that they need. Many thanks. Question 12, Jackson Carlow. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government how it will address the attainment gap between girls and boys identified in the 2014 edition of the Summary Statistics for Attainment, Lever Destinations and Healthy Living. Secretary Mike Russell. Yeah, presiding officer, the attainment of both boys and girls has risen significantly since 2007, though the gap between boys and girls remains. However, over the same period, the gap in positive destinations has narrowed from three percentage points in 2007 to 2.4 in 2012-13, a small but significant change. Together with all our partners, the Scottish Government shares a strong commitment to driving improvement and ensuring equity and attainment. And this includes addressing any gender-based differences so that all our children and young people achieve their full potential. That's reflected in our key policies and programmes, including Curriculum for Excellence, Teaching Scotland's Future, Getting It Right for Every Child, the Early Years Framework and Opportunities for All. 
We're working to ensure that teachers and school leaders have the right school skills and experience in the right numbers to deliver these improved outcomes for all children and young people. The range of integrated policies and programmes will help realise our ambition of making Scotland the best place for all children to learn. Of course, the member will realise that only with the full powers of independence will we truly be able to do everything we can to reduce poverty and finally close the attainment gap. Many thanks. Jackson Carlo. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that distressed response for which his fading voice might have been given a rest latterly? Uh, disturbingly, <laughs> disturbingly, for the fifth consecutive year, the gulf in attainment between girls and boys has widened still further, and moreover, statistics released last week highlighted that as a standalone ethnic group, as described white Scottish males, were outperformed by all female ethnic groups and by every other male group with one exception. Now, I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary will agree that in the short run, never mind the medium and long, this is far from sustainable. So what does he intend to do about it other than a little dose of wishful thinking, which was his response a moment ago? Cabinet Secretary. The truth is true, no matter how quietly it is said. <laughs> the uh, reality of the situation is that attainment, attainment is improving, and continues to improve. But the radical improvement in attainment, which we wish to see, cannot come without the full powers of a normal parliament. Because the problem, well, Labour members cry out, they should be crying out, presiding officer, against poverty, yeah. against the effects of poverty. Yeah. The, the, fact that, uh, the fact that how you do in school is often determined by where you come from. Now, in order to eliminate that, presiding officer, what you need to do is to bear down upon poverty. The Scottish Government has made considerable progress in closing the attainment gap with the tools that it has, but it needs all the tools to do the job, and no amount of shouting from either side will in actual Order. fact no amount of shouting from either side will in actual fact dispense th dispel that absolute truth. Thank you. Kezia Dugdale. Thanks, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary is right, attainment is improving and it's improving for care leavers, but only at half the pace of all other school children. What specific work is he doing to improve the educational attainment of looked after children across Scotland? Secretary. There's some very good work being done, and the Member will know that this has been a long and persistent problem in Scotland. Now, it has been tackled in a number of different ways. And I pay tribute, for example, to the work that Glasgow, City of Glasgow Council has done, working with a number of special projects to focus down upon individual children and help them to attain. Now, it is that model which is increasingly being used in secondary schools across Scotland to take those pupils who have the biggest difficulties, who have the greatest barriers to learning, which are often looked after children, and making sure that those are attended to. I spoke last week at the um, next stage of the uh, Pathfinder project that is looking at closing the attainment gap. A hundred secondary schools represented. And I have visited three of the six first Pathfinders. And I've seen in those schools uh, an attention to data and detail dealing with individual young people, which transforms their outcomes, but also transforms the outcomes for the school. These are exciting projects. I'd welcome the member having the opportunity to see them in action and to realise that by focusing on individual children, including looked after children, then there can be dramatic improvements and very fast improvements in performance. Thank you. Briefly and finally, Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you very much. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware there have been a number of reports uh, recently in relation to closing the attainment gap. The authors of one of those reports, Joseph Rowntree Foundation, met with the Education Committee earlier uh, this week, as well as making clear that uh, while funding is important, it's not sufficient. They did point to the benefits of having Education Scotland focusing on, uh, as part of the inspection regime, the, uh, the performance of schools in closing the attainment gap, and also the benefits that would arise from taking a pupil premium approach similar to that uh, south of the border. Are those two ideas the Cabinet Secretary is open to? Well, Education Scotland is already taking a focused approach, and Education Scotland has been a key partner in the process of looking, upon, looking at uh, improving schools and the improvement methodology, and will continue to be so. In terms of resourcing, uh, I'm glad the member accepts my argument that uh, resources are important, and the full resources likely to be available to this task could only come from this Parliament having full fiscal powers. Thank you very much. Question 13, Liz Smith. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government how it is publicising to parents the expansion of childcare provision. Mr Aileen Campbell. The Scottish Government is developing public information materials to raise awareness of the increased funded hours of early learning and childcare and extended eligibility for vulnerable two-year-olds. Thank you. Liz Smith. Uh, 
Thank you for the uh, answer. Uh, following yesterday's evidence session at the Education Committee, uh, Minister, you were not able to tell us just how many of the 3,440 cohort of uh, vulnerable children from workless families will be guaranteed childcare from this August. Uh, I wonder if you could now put on record what that number is and when the Scottish Government expects the relevant information to be publicised to parents. Minister. Well, as I said uh, yesterday, in the uh, uh, committee, local authorities are making progress every day and the picture of what is in place will continue to change in the lead up to the implementation. But we do know that they are working very hard, as, we are, as are we in Scottish Government, to make sure that this is a successful implementation of this uh, expanded provision. And it's important to remember, as I made the point yesterday, that the uh, decision to delay the legal enforcement is to allow uh, local authorities to be able to have that uh, transition rate flexibility. But I do wonder, with this continual negativity around this yeah. uh, proposal, that whether or not the Conservatives are against the expansion of childcare. In stark are. contrast they to their they Conservative are. colleagues across are. local government, indeed all parties Never across local government, which are working oh, very no, no. hard indeed to ensure Never that this is a success successful implementation of this childcare uh, provision for the expansion that we announced in January. This will benefit children's lives. This will help families across the country. And we should all get behind this proposal to ensure it is successfully implemented when it comes into force uh, in August. Many thanks. In leaving this subject, we move to question 14, Joan McAlpine. Officer, uh, to ask the Scottish Government when the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Life Lifelong Learning last visited the Crichton campus in Dumfries and what was discussed? Secretary? I visited the Crichton campus on the 12th of May to meet with staff and students at the University of the West of Scotland. I also met with Donald McKinnon, who was relinquishing his post in the Crichton um, Development Company and wished him well. During my visit, I heard about the excellent work they're doing, uh, everyone on the campus is doing as part of the unique, collaborative, successful academic partnership at the Crichton. Joan McAlpine. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Does he agree with me that a student association serving the students of Dumfries and Galloway College, the University of West of Scotland and the University of Glasgow and Scotland's Rural College would be an excellent way to take forward the joint working that he describes on the campus? Yeah, I think the member is absolutely right. I have been a very long-standing supporter of ensuring not only that there is a single student association on the site, which I think would be a, a very big step forward. I know there is already a shared uh, association, but also that they have premises to work from. It is really important on the Crichton site, which uh, is a site that has the widest diversity of students, that they have somewhere that they can call their own and somewhere that they can use for social and other activities. So I would be very keen for such a proposal to come forward. I do hope that the Scottish Funding Council might look sympathetically upon it, and I hope the partner agencies in the Crichton would see this as a very important next step. Many thanks. Question 15, Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what opportunities there are within the Curriculum for Excellence to study geology. Mr. Dr. <coughs> the Scottish Government recognises the importance of geological and earth science study to the curriculum and to the Scottish economy. The Curriculum for Excellence framework enables young people to undertake earth science learning within the science and social studies curriculum areas. Learners will be able to develop an understanding of the formation, characteristics and uses of the Earth's natural resources and landscape. The new national qualifications include aspects of Earth science within chemistry, physics, geography, science and environmental science courses. Thanks. Claire Adams. Can I thank the Minister for his answer? Um, Scotland is a country that produced the father of geology, James Hutton, as a great tradition in the study of geology. The Cabinet Secretary confirmed that a student unable to study geology at higher level will still be able to take up geology at further or higher education level by studying geography or other science subjects. Minister. Well, I, I believe I can offer that reassurance um, because uh, higher geology is not a mandatory requirement for entry into earth science courses at university uh, and hires in a range of subjects are used uh, as a minimum entry requirement for those wishing to study geology. Many thanks. Question 16, Alex Ferguson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government when it last met Dumfries and Galloway Council's Director of Education and what matters were discussed. Education Scotland's Area Lead Officer has regular meetings with the Director of Education. The Area Lead Officer last met with the Director of Education on the 1st of May. At this meeting, a range of topics were discussed, including a tailored package of support, which will form part of the local partnership agreement between Dumfries and Galloway Council and Education Scotland. Alex Ferguson. 
I'm uh, grateful for that response. Um, I would imagine both his officials and indeed he himself will have had some discussions over the financing and siting of the proposed new education hub in Dumfries. And I wonder if you would agree with me that it would be preferable for a full evaluation of alternative sites for the education hub to take place before any final decision is taken to locate it at the King George V playing field. Sir. I would agree with the member. I, I do believe that there are a number of uh, potential sites but in terms of uh, making sure there is no duplication, making sure that the resources of the college are fully utilised, making sure that, for example, there can be participation in a potential students' association, and given the past investment in the Crichton site, I do think it is uh, fairly extraordinary that that site seems to have been rejected already. I would urge the Council to work with the Scottish Government in partnership because we would like to see wood implementation taking place in, in, as, and Dumfries and Galloway is one of the pilot areas and I'm sure we could do so um, and unfortunately a, a decision to spend money in, in a wasteful way would not not help that matter. Many thanks. And that ends portfolio questions. And we now move to the next item of business, which is stage three proceedings on the Housing Scotland Bill. In